Tokyo and see for today. I wear a white shirt with a blue jacket and a black button with a mini view and a warm smile with a friendly demeanor and I have short black hair with brown eyes. I would like to officially welcome you to the 5th edition of the Arts and Disability Forum 2023. This year's edition is co-organized by the National Arts Council and Artists Singapore with the support of Program Partners, Singapore Art Museum and Singapore International Foundation with the Gateway Theatre as venue sponsor. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to invite the Executive Director of Artists, Ms. Angela Tan, to speak on behalf of the founder of Artists, Professor Tony Ko, to give a welcome address. Professor Ko is an ambassador at large at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and sits on the boards of many distinguished institutions, including chairman of the International Advisory Panel of the Centre of International Law at the National University of Singapore and US, and chairman of the National Advisory Committee of the Master's Degree on Environmental Management and US. Please join me in giving her a warm round of applause. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not able to channel the same sitchy uh, tonality of uh, Prof. Prof is actually uh, sick because I've got full and it's coughing, so he asked that I deliver the speech on his behalf. I will try my best. Um, many of you know that Prof is very dear to us because he was our founder 30 years ago, so he really wanted to still deliver a speech. So our guest of honor, Mr. Eric Chua, distinguished speakers, partners, and guests. I would like to extend also a special welcome to our foreign friends, Tim Corrigan, Katie Taylor, Kyoko Suzuki, and Gabriel Hobby. Will you please stand so we can express our gratitude? Mr. Suzuki, Gabriel, and I want to express thanks. Thank you. I'm very happy to have a chance to speak to this important forum. Uh, the forum dedicates my strong belief that the arts are for everyone, able or disabled. Everyone can enjoy the arts. A person with disability can sometimes make an enormous contribution to the arts. And my favourite examples are Beethoven for music, Milton for poetry, and Van Gogh for painting. The discovery of art and the practice of art can give meaning and purpose to the life of a disabled person. So let me give you an example from the show, America Got Talent. There is a boy in America called Cody Lee, and Prof talks about him a lot. He was born blind and autistic, and Cody's devoted mother discovered that Cody has a talent for singing and performing. And so he won the AGT in one of the series, and Cody's mother said that his ability to sing saved his life. The 30th anniversary of Art Dis. I am the patron of Art Dis, formerly known as Very Special Arts. I've been asked to share with you the story which led me to establish very special arts in 1993. Um, in 1991, the Singapore government appointed me as the first chairman of the National Arts Council. And after a while, I realized that NEC was not catering to the disabled community at that time. So I tried to persuade my colleagues to include them in our work. Um, and therefore, I decided to start very special arts in order to bring the arts to our disabled community and our talented disabled artists to the world. We had to overcome many obstacles in our early years. It was hard to raise financial support for our work. Some parents of disabled children were not sure whether their children would benefit from an arts education, and the general attitude of the public towards the disabled was very negative. This was 30 years ago. So I'm happy to tell you that 30 years later, this is a flourishing organization the world has changed and the attitude towards the disabled has become more positive and less negative. We are still not at the sweet spot, but we are moving in the right direction. Art Dis has benefited many artists over the years. Let me mention a few of them. First, the late Ms. Chiang Sok Tin, who was blind, but also a multi-talented artist who won the Cultural Medallion Award. Second, Dr. Azariah Tan, and he's in the audience here today, a world-class pianist who is gradually becoming deaf. Third, Victor Tan, a blind artist known to many of us, who is able to create brilliant sculptures. Fourth, Raymond Lau. Raymond suffers from the Tourette syndrome, but he has not prevented him from becoming an excellent painter and was once also the winner of the NEC Young Artist Award. 
We have to do more to give our talented disabled artists visibility and support to succeed in our very competitive world. Artists is small but mighty. And this is prof, not me, okay? The nonprofit has steadily advanced disability inclusion in Singapore by establishing pathways for persons with disabilities to professionalize and to reach their aspirations. From enabling artists with disabilities to develop holistically, empowering them to self-advocate and engage with them as collaborators who have a place in community. And I'm proud of what Artists has achieved. Their third and latest centre at Bukit Merah Community Hub, which is just across the road um, from where we are today, is a testament of this. With the vision of an inclusive space and the strong support of partners like Capital Land Hope Foundation and Singapore Pools, the team built a professionally equipped black box and recording studio for artists with disabilities to deepen capabilities, realize their aspirations, and to grow audience appreciation for more diverse representation in the arts. It is also a space to deepen conversations and the capacity building of what it takes to grow space for persons with disability in our society. Many of you have already attended or will be attending workshops at our Bukit Mara Centre. So I hope you find the space accessible, inspiring, and ripe for fruitful conversation and collaboration. In closing, the disability sector has progressed in Singapore. With the launch of the fourth enabling master plan, I am positive we will further level the playing field for persons with disability. There is little society cannot achieve if we work together. So I hope that the knowledge learned, skills thought, tools acquired, and partnerships forged today will last beyond this forum, grow legs and feedback into the ecosystem with each of you as its champion. Diversity isn't just a buzzword, let's make it a reality starting with today. So thank you on behalf of Professor Tomiko and thank you all for being here today. Thank you Miss Angela Tan. And now, it is my honour to introduce the guest of honour, Mr. Eric Chua, Senior Parliamentary Secretary of the Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth and Ministry of Social and Family Development to give a speech. Mr. Eric Chua is no stranger to the disability space. He was the co-chair of the 27-member Enabling Master Plan 2030 Steering Committee that set out the vision for Singapore as an inclusive society in 2030. Please give him a warm round of applause. <clears throat> Ms. Lynette Pang, Deputy CEO, National Arts Council. Ms. Angela Tan, Executive Director, Artists. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, family of the Artists community. I think a very good morning to all of you. I'm very happy to be here in the, I think, first of all, let me send our best, best wishes on behalf of everyone this fall to Prof. Hope he recovers soon and quickly and join us for our next available event. I was so looking forward, looking forward to seeing him and having a chat with him. He's quite a charismatic man and uh, you always get a great experience tapping on his wisdom of his experiences in life. So very happy to see so many of us here today for the fifth edition of the Arts and Disability Forum, ADF, that's jointly organized by the National Arts Council and ARTIS. The last few years have been significant for the disability community right here in Singapore, with major milestones in the policy space and innovations in accessibility across various sectors. As we envision the arts and disability landscape, we want to build together in the coming years. I encourage all of us to draw from two national plans. First is the Enabling Master Plan 2030 that Angela on behalf of Prof has talked about, or EMP 2030 as we call, sets out Singapore's vision as an inclusive society by the year 2030. The second is our SG Arts Plan, which builds upon the collective efforts of the arts community to chart out a roadmap for the next five years. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those of you who have been working closely with NAC to give your valuable feedback to our SG Arts Plan. Now, allow me to share a little bit more about each of these plans. First, 
EMP 2030 envisions a caring and inclusive Singapore where persons with disabilities are enabled to pursue their aspirations, achieve their fullest potential, and participate as integral contributing members of Singapore society. I had the privilege of co-chairing the EMP 2030 Steering Committee with Mr. Gan Xiaoqi, Vice Chairperson of the Singapore Business Federation. And as part of the Steering Committee, we work closely together with persons with disabilities, caregivers, disability sector professionals. We shared 29 recommendations, spanning some 14 focal areas along three strategic themes. Now, one of the focal areas in EMP 2030 is in developing an inclusive arts and heritage landscape right here in Singapore. Now, the arts are a powerful platform to deepen our sense of belonging and build our shared sense of national identity, what it takes to truly be Singaporean. We have a shared culture based off our collective experiences. The arts can foster empathy and understanding between different communities contributing to a cohesive Singapore society. And that is why persons of all abilities must be given more opportunities to appreciate and to participate in the arts. Under the EMP 2030 strategic theme on creating inclusive physical and social environments, the government will continue to drive accessibility and inclusion in the arts. One way is through NAC. NEC will facilitate the creation of more inclusive arts experiences, including building the capabilities of the arts community in areas such as audio description, captioning, signing. We will also increase support for persons with disabilities to pursue the arts professionally through initiatives such as scholarships. Partners like ArtDis offer industry mentorship programs for artists with disabilities to develop professionally. We will also work closely with community partners to ensure that persons with disabilities have regular opportunities to participate in the arts, whether as consumers, practitioners, or even volunteers. By 2030, I hope that our arts landscape will be even more accessible and one which celebrates diversity and the contributions of persons of all abilities. Second, our SG Arts plan seeks to build a connected society, one where Singaporeans from all walks of life will be able to partake in quality arts programming through accessible arts initiatives. This is especially applicable to persons with disabilities and their caregivers who face unique challenges when assessing the arts. I'm heartened to see that in the past few years, many arts institutions in Singapore have incorporated access components for audiences with disabilities and have increased the number of artists with disabilities in their program. The newest artist center at Bukit Mera you heard about earlier, for example, features inclusive infrastructure throughout its facilities. And it has become more commonplace for arts venues to offer sign or caption performances. So we must continue to work towards increasing opportunities for persons with disabilities to showcase their art, paving the way for a more diverse arts and culture ecosystem. At the recent Light Tonight Festival, Access Park Productions and RJ Thompson led an international team of artists to present short films, inviting viewers to contemplate living in a world that overlooks persons with disabilities. And in their synopsis, I checked it out. Uh, there was one line that read, If you don't see us, you don't think about us. I think that's plenty food for thought. This performance combines text, visual, audio descriptions with shadow interpretation and performance art. And I think it's a great example of how disability can catalyze creativity and collaboration in the arts all at the same time. Today's forum presents yet another opportunity for all of us, social service professionals, artists, foundations, funders, policy makers, researchers, to all come together under one umbrella and reflect on what more can be done in partnership 
with one another. Through platforms like the ADF, I hope the community will continue to advocate and share best practices for engaging and collaborating with persons with disabilities to ensure that everyone can participate in the arts. I must say at this point that I have been really privileged to have been a small part of Art Disney's journey, amazing journey I should say, championing inclusive arts in Singapore over the past three decades. The Art Disney's team's work include conducting foundational classes and professional training for persons with disabilities at the three centres, opening up more pathways for persons with disabilities to pursue the arts, and by organising masterclasses and residencies that bring together artists of all abilities, ArtDisc also facilitates meaningful collaborations and builds bridges with the wider arts sector. These efforts allow everyone to enjoy, benefit from and contribute to Singapore's unique arts and cultural landscape. At this juncture, I would like to call out to all community partners out there. Join us! so that we can achieve our collective vision for a more vibrant art scene as well as a more caring and inclusive society right here in Singapore. Because it is only together that we can grow the opportunities for persons with disabilities, not only to access the arts as audiences, but also to showcase their artwork, grow professionally and contribute meaningfully to the arts. And in doing so, artists with disabilities will be empowered to develop self-confidence, achieve their aspirations, and most importantly, live life with dignity. The theme for this year's forum, Enabling Aspirations, Diversifying Pathways. Now, disability is not a monolithic, singular experience. Having embarked on our first steps to increase access to the arts, it is now timely to take inclusive arts in Singapore to the next level. By giving artists with disabilities more opportunities and choices to pursue diverse pathways and to excel. This includes opening up avenues for persons with disability to become leaders in the arts sector, paving the way for others in the community to pursue their preferred art forms, whether professionally or recreationally. Now, one of our panellists at the forum later is Dr. Ezra Tan. He's right here amongst our midst today. He's an NAC scholar and a very accomplished concert pianist and educator. I wish he's performing today with all given a great treat to his, to his um, piano mastery. He has navigated many challenges of being a hearing impaired classical musician. And today, he sits on the board of ArtDis. Ensuring that persons with disabilities have such leadership opportunities is important as we work towards building an arts ecosystem that is globally relevant and resilient at the same time. As with every edition of ADF, I am sure that upcoming discussions will further widen our perspectives and show that there is a community of people who believe in and want to work together to build an inclusive Singapore where no one is left behind. So with that, I want to thank everybody for your attention and for having me here this morning. And I wish everyone an inspiring day ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Eric Chua. I would now like to invite Ms. Angela Tan, the Executive Director of ArtDis, to give her opening remarks. Angela was formerly the National Arts Council whose key appointments include leading the Singapore Arts Week, the Civic District Precinct Planning, and the Public Art Trust. She was also involved in initiating key funding and capacity building programs for the social sector, including the We Care Arts Fund and the Arts Training for Social and Healthcare Practitioners with the Social Service Institute and the Agency for Integrated Care. Ms. Angela Tan, please. Thank you, Dewey. Um, welcome everybody, this is my real voice. <laughs> I was trying to tone it down because it was Professor who was supposed to be speaking just now. Um, I'm an Asian girl with uh, shoulder length black hair. I look a lot younger than I am because I've got three kids who aged me by 10 years, I like to say. Um, so welcome to all our guests here. 
Um, and before I start, I'd like to really acknowledge that today's forum was really um, hard work with multiple partners. Uh, to the National Arts Council who was collaborating with us on this forum, um, showing very strong support. Where is uh, ah, Singapore International Foundation as a program partner? Um, the Singapore Art Museum as a program partner as well, where we brought uh, one of our keynote speakers there and were giving a public talk and workshops. And last but not least, Gateway Theatre for being our venue sponsor. Uh, they are just, you know, we are their neighbour. We felt it was so natural for us to just come here and spend the time with everyone talking about the very important thing, arts and disability as an intersecting field. You know, each of these sectors, um, both disability as well as the arts, are very, very complex. As what uh, Eric said, they are not monolithic and they are very, very complex micro you know, microsystems that when two come together, it almost feels as if that both sectors are using very different language, with very different interests, very different outcomes that they're looking at. And so, you know, if I have to come back to really the core of today and asking the question of why the arts, why the arts matter to artists, why does it matter that we work with people with disabilities and include them? not just as access audience, not part of our access programs, but include them on stage, represented in main space, main, you know, main spaces in the museums. And I wanted to, when I asked myself that question, why the arts, right? I, I often think of this artwork uh, that I stumbled across in my early days when I first joined Artists. It was lying around and I had this, no, this was actually in the inventory. So when I first went, joined Artists last year, um, one of the things I did was to actually go through the full inventory of all the works. And I think I stressed the team out because I said, where are all the works? And, and for me, I wanted to understand the um, artists and the students we work with through the works because they offer us a view into their world that tells us more than you know, our interaction. Very often, you know, when I look at the work, I almost feel like I can see their world. And so if I invite everyone to just look at this um, artwork, you know, what do you see? All right? If I may just describe this work, it is um, a work of many multiple concentric circles in black, outline, shades of pink, green, and they are almost cell-like, tied together. When I saw this work, I was very drawn to it because I thought you know, there was something that was very methodical about it and I kept it aside. I was going to show it to my colleague and say, let's make this into a, you know, a merchandise that someone can buy. And then a few weeks later, I was speaking to another of my team and she was saying, hey, do you know this work by this artist and one of our students? That work was about mathematical equations. And at that moment, you know, it clicked in me why I was doing the work in this intersecting field because it just offered me a different way to look at the world. I saw circles, I saw a beautiful painting that in my mind I wanted to sort of, you know, make it into something, but it was another artist, perhaps in mixing the paint, as you can see, there are many different shades, you know, adding, subtracting the paint, how much hue, it was a mathematical equation to him. And, you know, it's these moments that we, when we are taking the time to really engage uh, and to interact and to look at the work and not look at the person, we begin to see that there is so much value for the arts and the disability field to intersect because the arts offers us a way of engaging and opening up the world of people with disabilities who sometimes you might feel that we are not able to enter for various reasons, maybe they could be non-verbal, but also the arts is a platform where it's a learning field because when I looked at this work, I did not think that it was a work by someone who was disabled. I just liked it because it was a work. And it was good. So I know I'm speaking to the converted here, but I still thought it was really important to bring us back, you know, before we start going to all the discussions and all of the thought leadership, which I, I know I'm not a part of, you know, to some extent for me, it's just being a bystander and reflecting on why this is so important for us is to really get to the core um, of it and, and to ask ourselves that are we able to genuinely and authentically self-reflect on the work that we do 
both in the arts and in the social sector, the social constructs we operate within that sometimes needs to be dismantled because they disable rather than enable, um, and interrogate you know, what it means to engage the person first before the disability. Um, and what does it mean to engage at, and engage them as our peers at an equitable level and not from a place of charity, not from a place of access and inclusion, but from a place of representation of equal terms, as peers, as collaborators, as like-minded people who perhaps want to share, exchange their views and you know their place in the world. We just finished a two-day workshop with Project Artworks, who will be speaking later. They have completely ruined, ruined my black box. <laughs> well, they got, you know, they, they work on very large format works because it's all about um, going, going to the space and, and you know, inviting um, neurodiverse artists and people to into the space to express themselves um, collaboratively. So they put up papers all over the front of my black uh, my black box and it's red now. So my black box which used to a white wall and you enter is now a white a red wall with like an abstract painting, a huge abstract painting that engulfs you when you step in and I love it. And I told the team let's leave it there for as long as possible. But why am I sharing about this work? Or rather why was I why did I want to share about this workshop was because in that workshop it was it was just two days but it was very restorative because we put aside the curriculums the learning objectives, the visual arts framework that we have to, you know, so all of us who work in the in the scene, we know we have to sort of find a way to sort of respond to all these different um, frameworks of growth. But we put all of that aside, and we went back to the basics of human connection. There were very many tender moments in the workshop when we did that, you know, where it was completely non-judgmental, it was at your own pace, if you wanted to walk around, you could, we had one of our students just just spend the whole afternoon just walking around us and we were fine. And one of the tender moments was when one of our students, and this is just in the first day, in the first half of the morning, when we were putting out cardboard boxes to create a wall for an installation, he decided that he wanted to use the cardboard boxes to create a wall around himself. And to us that was, wow, because you know Daniel, you wouldn't imagine Daniel to do that, and he was responding to the environment. There was another student, Joy, who was mostly non-verbal and had to be accompanied by her mom throughout. You know, complete, mostly non-participative, but we know she was engaging. Suddenly, out of nowhere, bolted out to take the cardboard box, put it somewhere, and ran back to the seat. That was a big moment for us because we said, what happened? You know, someone who was completely non-participative suddenly in that moment connected what we were doing and wanted to be a part of it because we created space for her on her terms. There was Jane Kian, who was, as I said, walking around the whole time, right? But that was his way of connecting with us and he was fully aware of what was going on because there were some other things was you know, he was making work separately, suddenly, and then asking Katie to put his work on the wall, not in the black box, but in my community space, because before he entered the space, he saw all the artworks lined up around there, and he knew that he wanted his work on the outside wall, and he made that choice, and we allowed him to make that choice and responded to it. And that was really a teaching moment for me because so many times when we go in as practitioners, as organizations, when we run programs with the service vendors coming in, we go in with a set outcome. We go in thinking that this is what we want to do and that, and when we allow them to have that space, it just teaches us so much more and shows us that they're fully capable of having to make their own decisions when you know, given the space to. And it also reminded me to pause when we're with them because when we go in, you know, whether as an arts organization or even as social service practitioners, when we are spent, we are going into the space with them, we inhabit the world on their own terms. We inhabit the world together with them on their own terms. And on their own terms also means acknowledging that they may want something that is different from what we think that they would want. And how prepared are we as sometimes intruders into their space to re-examine our own structures 
that enable and not disable them. And I like to share a quote. Um, oops, I didn't show this, but this is beautiful, right? This is by Joshua. I couldn't resist. This is actually my favorite artist um, that is with us. This is a quote by Yuki, and Yuki is now in Scotland pursuing her undergraduate degree. But as part of her two-year training program, she self-devised a piece that was you know, informed by her lived experience as a person with disability, you know, navigating the non-hearing world. And she said this in her self-devised piece in the black box. Yes, you have a million dreams to the audience, and so do I. As long as I can be real to myself, I can achieve anything. And this is where I am going to change my destiny. She desires to be given the chance to be real to herself, to be treated on her own terms. Yuki's desire was not to be a participant or an audience member of some cultural institution's access program, nor to be a representation of diversity for optics. She has important things to say as a young person living with disability, informed by her world and lived experience. And when we can embrace the full spectrum of arts and disability field, it would also encompass working with very high support needs, which is the reason why I brought in Project Hours, because they work with people with very complex support needs. Um, they enrich, you know, but also, and, and, and also as we engage these individuals, and acknowledging that they have dreams and aspirations, we enrich our own cultural landscape, as we see how the arts teach us to see persons from a place of asset, of strength, not from deficit. So I'm very sorry that the title of my entrance was a little bit misleading because it was about mapping the landscape. I really wanted to do that, but as I was doing that, it just felt it didn't make sense if I wasn't going back to the core of the person and, and why we're doing what we're doing, why we even set ourselves out as an organization and many of you. Um, and so thank you for giving, coming, giving us the chance to invite many of our young artists on stage later to be part of the panels because we want them to represent themselves, to advocate for themselves. And of course, amongst them, there are many, many others more who are growing, yeah, with aspirations that we hope that the future that we grow with them is one that includes them. So thank you, everybody.